Hi everyone, my name is Victor Wu. I'm a product manager here at GitLab. And today I wanted to show you uh, some features in the plan stage of the DevOps lifecycle. So you can see uh, in GitLab we have many stages in our DevOps lifecycle. We have the plan stage in particular, and the purpose of this video is to show you exhaustively all the features in our plan stage as you see on the screen. So the, all the features in the plan stage are in about.gitlab.com slash features um, pound sign <clears throat> plan. So I will be going through this particular list. You can go through this list on your own. You can see links to documentation and whatnot, but this will be an attempt um, as of April 17th um, of 2019 to be as exhaustive as possible going through every single feature in plan uh, as documented on this particular website um, on GitLab. We have issues in GitLab, um, and so I'm going to be jumping around actually today. Um, and so you have issues in GitLab, and if you have an issue page, so you have issues here, and you can see that um, we have issues, and you can see a title, description, comment thread, a sidebar with a bunch of attributes, and so on and so forth. Um, I will be showing. Oops, uh, going to description templates. In GitLab, there are description templates. Uh, when you create a new issue in GitLab, what you can do is choose a description template to use that issue. Um, so you can see coding style proposal, so on and so forth. So there are many different um, templates that you can configure. Uh, templates are um, stored. In a variety of places or in particular they're stored in two places at the project level there is a default description template that you can enter stored in the database associated with the project but you can store additional uh, templates description templates in the code repository of your project so if you go to files here you go to dot gitlab you can see issue templates um, and these are all the description templates going further <clears throat> we have Task lists. In GitLab, you have task lists uh, showing you a list of tasks. Um, and so you can have things like this, um, a, so on and so forth. And you form a task list that shows up in many markdown fields throughout GitLab, including comments and the description. And even uh, you will see two of three, for example, tasks that are finished if you check them off in the description. File attachments. You can attach files in GitLab by clicking here, you can attach it to the description and you can attach any binary file from uh, and upload it into GitLab and it will be attached. Award emoji, you can award emoji here as associated with um, a particular uh, issue. Uh, in, in, in this case, you're associating with the description essentially. Um, and then also for say, uh, let's find something that's been uh, open longer. Um, has a comment you can associate you can add an emoji uh, add a reaction emoji to an existing comment throughout GitLab GitLab flavored markdown um, so this you're typing markdown you can click on this button and actually it'll give you more information on the markdown uh, syntax that you can use within all these markdown fields inside GitLab again we call it GitLab flavored markdown um, to to give the specific implementation and syntax you can see so for example, uh, you can have headings here, you can have um, hello, something like this. So standard things you would see in Markdown, uh, you would see inside GitLab. Threaded discussions, so you can have threaded discussions here, you can respond to this comment and then you can create a thread inside this comment um, activity thread, you can have multiple threaded discussions. Filter both system activity, you can go to this area, you can show comments only, so you will only see comments right now, or you can see uh, system notes or our activity from the system by showing these things only. And when you do this, uh, there's this little UI here in GitLab tells you it's very helpful so that uh, you can go back to showing comments or showing activity so that you know you're not logged out and you can actually comment. That's great. Tracking title changes, you can see that um, if a title needed to be changed, then um, you would be able to see it. Um, so I'll give you an example here for an issue that may have changed title, um, probably in 
this one would be a good one. <clears throat> and you can see that uh, the title changed here. I deleted this uh, characters and then added this character here. And so it's tracking the title changes. Continuing. Uh, labels. Labels are used throughout GitLab as you can see here. You can configure them in the label list of a project and a group. You also have prioritized labels. Oops, let me go back to here. Um, and uh, you can see you can move these labels around like so. And with the with prioritized labels, when you go to this issue view, um, let me go to a uh, incognito one so I'm not logged in so I won't be showing anything that I shouldn't be showing. And uh, seeing a label list and I can sort by label priority. Um, because I have those priority labels, as I mentioned earlier, so sorting by label priority, these issues now will be sorted by priority label. You see next patch release, next patch release, so on and so forth. So if you go back to here, you saw next patch release was the highest prioritized label. So that's why those issues are first, so on and so forth. Issue weights. Um, so you will use these for story points and other systems that's equivalent to that. So estimating effort. So you go into any issue, um, for example, this one. Uh, and you can see that there's an issue weight for this one. It's, there's no issue weight, um, but you can add it and it will show up in a variety of places, in issue boards, issue lists, showing you sums of weights and whatnot. Milestones are uh, work in a variety of ways. They can work just like um, agile sprints or they can work as point in time. So uh, example here, inside gitlab.org, and I'll probably show this one to be a little bit safer. Um, and then show you the milestones here. And you can see that there's all these milestones, 11, 10, 11, 11 at GitLab. When we use milestones, we, we use them to represent both a sprint uh, and a release. Um, but any milestone has both a start date and an end date. As you can see here, it's March 8th to April 22nd. Um, and you can see, you can change that information if you were logged in in this particular case, and you can edit the milestone. So if you only have a due date, then you can represent that as a as use a milestone as a say a release on a particular date. Continuing. Issue due dates um, with a particular issue. You can associate with it a due date. And if you do that, um, then that issue will send you a notification actually um, two days prior um, with some caveats and notification settings. Assignee, you can have multiple assignees and issues. Um, here you can have multiple assignees with issues. Let me give you an issue, uh, one of these issues here, uh, and you can assign multiple people to that issue. You can lock a discussion. You can go here and lock a discussion. If you do that, uh, as it says, that only project members will be able to continue commenting here. You can make a uh, issue confidential. Uh, if you do that, only reporter access members or above are able to actually see the issue. The issue will just be hidden if you don't have that level of permissions. That's great for uh, secure, tracking security bugs, uh, tra tracking private customer data, or just any uh, scenario where uh, you have uh, issue tracker, in our case, where you want it to be public in the general case, but then you want it to have some private uh, conversations about something. You can use confidential issues. Related issues. Uh, you can associate an issue with another issue here. I could associate another issue like so. So for example, um, I could associate this issue, which I'll do right now as an example. Um, and now it's an associated issue. So then I can click here and go to this uh, related issue like so. So really, really helpful. Moving an issue to another project. An issue is, uh, I'm going to show this so you can see everything's easier. You can move an issue to any project. What that will do behind the scenes is actually close this issue and open an issue in the target project of where you want to move it. So moving an issue uh, is an abstraction. What's really happening underneath the hood is closing an issue and copying all the contents, the title, description, sidebar information, comments, thread, um, and pasting it in the new target uh, issue that was just created in the target project. Well, you can mark an issue as a duplicate, and if you do that, this issue will be closed, uh, and then you'll get a link indicating as such that it's a duplicate of an existing issue. You can anticipate duplicate issues, which is which is really cool. Um, let me go back to uh, here. 
and if you create a new issue and you can start typing, you will see um, anticipated issues right now. Uh, on production, getout.com, I believe uh, we've disabled this functionality uh, due to some bug or performance reason, I believe. So you won't see it just yet, unfortunately, but you can see it here how it looks. New issue via email. Um, oops, going back down. Uh, new issue via email. So what you can do is you can go to any issue tracker, uh, for example, the GitLab CE issue tracker here, and I can, uh, or, or uh, going back to say this one, uh, and then I can click any button here. Oh, this is the uh, the group level. So this only this feature only exists at the project level. So let me go back to the project level one, and I can email a new issue to this project. I can copy this email address. Uh, here and so forth, open up my email app on my desktop if I had one. So that, that's really awesome. Uh, bulk edit, I can bulk edit issues um, as well. And so um, using uh, here, this is again at the group level, but uh, really quickly, um, I can do bulk edit here and change the issue information here. Uh, so I can select status, I can change the labels, and so on and so forth um, by selecting multiple issues like so. Great. I can export issues to a CSV file. I can import issues from a CSV file uh, doing this here or this here. And for export, what it does is actually whatever is on the page, whatever you filtered by it, um, it will be sent to your email address. Burn down charts are really awesome. Currently, they are associated with the milestone itself. Um, so here is my milestone. Here's my burn down chart. Seeing the issues burned down in the milestone, you can do it by weight as well as issue count, as you see there. Awesome. Issue analytics is an awesome feature. You can see issues that have been created in the past month, I believe. Um, it's at the group level. And so you can see issues that have been created in the past couple months, or 12 months in this case. Quick actions, you can mark, um, you can go into any comment here. You can do a variety of quick actions. You can do many of the things that I've just been talking about, but you can do it as uh, quick actions inside this comment box. You can actually see a list of quick actions very easily here. Uh, you can see that it's, it's quite substantial, all the quick actions that we support in GitLab. Custom notifications, you can go into your personal uh, settings in gitlab.com or, or self-hosted GitLab and um, make custom notifications. You can also configure per project or per group, so there's a lot of granular things there. To-dos as well um, are something that uh, similar to notifications, um, but uh, they're not exactly the same, and uh, you are assigned to do's when things happen, such as you're mentioned in an issue, and so on and so forth. So it's a great resource here, so you can see I have a lot to do for myself, um, and um, as things are happening, um, I can mark these to do's as done, and so on and so forth. I can mark something as done, I can mark all of them as done, and so on and so forth. Custom text and emails, uh, you can configure email text in the entire instance. Um, so here I don't have access to the entire instance on gitlab.com as a, because I'm not an admin, but you can do this uh, enable um, additional text to appear in all communications. Really, really awesome feature. Um, so you can do sub addressing email servers. Um, you can do you can do um, catch all email inboxes. You can do Jira integration with GitLab. You can do a bunch of integrations with GitLab uh, issues uh, and merge requests, but I, I, in this particular page, we're high, uh, highlighting Jira because it's a, it's a popular um, issue tracking tool in the industry. Many companies use it, and so many companies using organizations in general using GitLab. Merge requests will integrate with GitLab uh, with Jira issues, and so we have even have Jira development panel integration hooking up with GitLab merge requests. Uh, issue boards are, are a really awesome feature inside GitLab. You can see um, issue boards here. You can see them at the group level and at the project level. Um, so let me show you. Oops. So you can see there's this nice search here. And I'm going to show 
the, the plan issue board um, here. That's not very exciting. There's not much here um, because we're already in 11.11. So there's going to be a lot more here. So that's, that's an issue board. You can see project level issue boards, as I mentioned, and group issue boards. You can have multiple project issue boards and multiple group issue boards. Um, total issue count per issue board list, total issue weight. So let's go back to this uh, example here so you can see it. So you can see per list, you can see the issue count in this list and the issue, total issue weight, so 5 and 15, 10 and 30, so on and so forth. So uh, 2 and 5, so 2 issues, 2 plus 3 is 5, so that's what that 5 is. Issue board label list, assigning list, and milestone lists. So this is a really, really cool feature. So let me go back to here and maybe show you some of our boards in action. And so you can see these are label lists um, here. You can see the backend team as is using boards um, with assignee lists here. And you can see people assigned to issues uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, for assigning list and you can even see um, milestone lists so milestone list um, oops and so you can see uh, issues per milestone here and so essentially um, if I go back to here and click this example you can see uh, issues associated with a particular milestone uh, are in the milestone list, so you can use boards as essentially three or more ways. Um, so that's that's really cool. Uh, okay. Continuing issue board configuration, you can look at the configuration here, and you can scope down the issues associated with the board. Issue board focus mode, which is really awesome as well. You can um, see take out some of the Chrome at the top of the issue board. Reorder the issues in the issue board list. You can move these around, <clears throat> and that will save the priority order. You can add multiple issues to project issue board. This is a pretty cool feature that uh, it'll exist uh, currently for the project level. So that's why I'm going to actually go to the project level to show you that. Uh, but if you go to the project level issue board, <clears throat> you can see that. Um, you can add issues here and you can see multiple issues and you can add them all at once to a particular list so a really really cool feature here new issue in issue board list um, so you can actually create issues in line in the board itself and it will be associated with that list with that label in this case already so that that's also a really nice feature with issue boards time tracking um, time tracking, you can go to, into any issue and enter time tracking information. Um, let's go to one example. Let's go to um, something that might have, uh, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just do any issue here. And so you can enter time tracking information here. You can add, remove the time spent. You can spend time. Uh, so you can add and subtract time. And you can estimate. How much time it will take and that information will be populated in the sidebar here very cool um, yeah so that that's what these three features are for time management moving to agile portfolio management you can have multi-level epics reorder issues and epic epic fixed states so let me go into say here and show you that very quickly um, and you can go to um, some of these epics here. Uh, let me find an epic that is meaty and has a lot of good information that can show off this um, this view essentially. So in this particular case, this epic has a um, has a parent epic, but that doesn't have any children epic, so that's not too interesting. <clears throat> this epic is more interesting. It's a parent epic. It has uh, it's an epic itself. It has a parent epic, so it has an ancestor that you can click on, which is yet another epic, right? And it can also have child epics, so it has just three child epics here. So what's um, sort of really cool as well, there's a roadmap view, and you can actually see the child epics, um, 
child ethics basic structure of Mike and this one. Um, <clears throat> these two ethics have start and end dates, so that's why it shows on this roadmap view inside the ethic itself. The roadmap view in general is here, and you'll see all ethics scoped to the group here. And so you're going to see a lot of them here. But uh, the one that's really cool is this one where you can see child ethics and the roadmap view of those child ethics here. So there's a lot there. Um, you can reorder the issues in an epic. So <clears throat> if you go into this particular epic, you can see issues. You can move them around, and that will save the system. Uh, I'm not going to show that here because I'm logged out. Um, so that, that won't work. You have to be logged in to reorder issues or epics um, because that will save to the system. So that's the purpose of reordering them in the first place. Um, and you can use that to indicate priority or, or order of implementation, whatnot. You can use fixed dates and from milestone. Uh, again, let, let me show you it in action, actually. Um, here, or actually, I'll, I'll just do this. Copy over, paste. There we go. So you can see you can uh, move issues around like that, right? And then that will save to the system. And you can change this from fi fixed date to from milestone. Fixed date is, is exactly what you think. It's a, it's a fixed date that you set for the start and end date of the epic. From milestone is that it's going to look at all the issues here and look at the issue with the very uh, earliest milestone associated with that issue. And so in this case, it's actually 11.3. And 11.3 starts on September 22nd. Um, and uh, or ends on September 22nd and starts on August 8th. Um, and so that's why that's what August 8th did. And the last milestone here is 12.0 and ends on June 22nd. And so that's why that's what this is here. So it's, it's taking all of these milestones of these uh, issues and then uh, dynamically calculating. So if you make any changes to these things, um, these two fields will, will update automatically. They're dynamic dates and they will be reflected on the roadmap itself as I showed earlier, or already had it here, right? So the start date and end date of a given epic will depend on uh, what I showed earlier, these values here. Okay, spend a lot of time there. So that's epic fixed dates, epic dynamic dates, as I mentioned, roadmaps, as I showed you earlier, can promote an issue to an epic, um, similar to moving an issue. When you promote an issue to an epic, um, it will, uh, take all the information, title, description, and copy it over, close the issue, and create a new epic. Um, so when, if you're working on an issue and you wanted to turn into an epic, you can do that. And very cool. I believe that wraps it up. There might be, yeah, there might be service desk. So service desk is the last feature I wanted to mention. So um, I don't want to show it on production because that's going to have sensitive information. Um, but uh, you can see in this screenshot here, that uh, you can see service desk issues um, and basically like uh, like a Zendesk or, or something like that where you uh, email in, you have your customers email into a given email address and then those issues will show up inside GitLab and you can respond to those issues um, and then uh, in line and then the customer will get the information back. So your customer will be using uh, an email interface and then but you as a GitLab will be um, talking to the customer inside an issue. So that, that's GitLab service desk. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave some comments in the video. Uh, reach out to us at GitLab. You can learn about more, again, at about.gitlab.com. Sign up for our account at gitlab.com. Uh, and start playing with the features. Thank you.